The last thing I'll talk about in this section is about continuous integration, um, otherwise known as CI, and continuous delivery and deployment, um, both of which go by the acronym of CD. Uh, so this is about the whole developer flow. So what I show on this slide here are two software developers, and of course you may have many of them, that are working on a particular service. Occasionally, these software developers are going to go and check into some code into some kind of source code repository, like GitHub is a typical example here. Then usually, once that's done, you would like the rest of the process to be completely automated, right? So here's the part that requires uh, people to do work, and the rest of this process that I'm about to show you, you would like it to be done all in an automated fashion. So you would go and set up a continuous integration server that continuous integration server will periodically check the source code repository to see if new uh, source code files have been checked in. When it sees that, it can go and check out that code, it can go and build that code, and then it goes and creates a container image that has all that code in it. That's the continuous integration part, is building everything and making sure it's all good. That container image that gets created would then be sent into a container image registry similar to the one I mentioned on the previous slide, um, like uh, Docker Hub, for example. Now we have that container image loaded into a registry somewhere, and now we would want to begin our testing. So you would probably have some kind of test cluster that's set up. So this would be a set of virtual machines. It's usually very small in size because you don't want to pay a lot of money for it. The machines are not high-end machines, like not a lot of CPUs, not a lot of RAM, because you're not going to have external customers that may number in the millions hitting this test cluster. Right? It's usually it's just for internal uh, company testing. And then you would have the... Um, orchestrator, see that an image has changed over here, it can go and grab that new container image and then do an upgrade within your test cluster to get the new container spawned with the new images and bring down the old containers with the old images. And then in an ideal world you would do automated testing against this too as much as possible and then hopefully all the automated tests would succeed. You might want to have some human beings bang on it too just for new features and things like that to see if everything is working correctly. If you feel comfortable that the testing is all working well, then you could use continuous delivery again in order to take that container image and update your staging cluster. So now you're exposing the staging cluster to more people. Maybe you have some customers and you want to let them try out certain things before you put your code, new version of the code, out to all customers. Um, a lot of these steps are optional, by the way. Some people go right from test to production, or they skip tests and they test while in staging, right? So there's certain permutations of this that you can take advantage of if you'd like. Like to. Uh, and then if everything goes well in staging, uh, if you feel comfortable enough that your testing suites are good and your performance testing as well as functional testing is all good, um, you could automate the last step which is called continuous deployment and that's when you take your container images and you update the containers that are in production to have the new images on them. But now you're in production and this is where all your customers are hitting this so you have to have a very high degree of confidence in the new version of the code if you're going to set up automated continuous deployment. Some people just go automated continuous delivery and then they, when they really feel comfortable, they have a human being intervene and force the deployment to occur without having that all automated. The last note that I have at the bottom of the slide here is that modern DevOps, because that's what really we've been talking about is DevOps here and modernizing it, it's really all about automating these steps, right? As I said, you want to try to get to a place where you have human beings that are writing code and checking in code, and then from that point forward, as much as automated as possible. Um, of course, anywhere along the way here, something could fail. The code may not compile because there's something wrong in the source code. It could be that something went wrong with the registry over here. It could be that your test suites had performance issues, or maybe there was something functionally incorrect. Um, pushing out the staging, something went wrong. So you also have to automate the failure cases. And you have to make sure that any failures that occur anywhere along this pipeline, 
By the way, this is typically called the DevOps pipeline. Those uh, notifications of failures are sent back to the developers, and of course, any further progress down the pipeline is stopped. And then the developers would receive notification, and then they can go and fix the code, check things in, and start the pipeline over again for the very next version. So hopefully this section gives you a really good insight into what containers do for you, what's the difference between a container image and a container itself, how the orchestrators work with the containers, and what the DevOps pipeline is like for going from people creating code to checking that code in, to getting those images created, to getting the orchestrator to deploy them for testing, staging, and production.